Hello! So this tutorial is a beginner's introduction to Lightroom. Lightroom's a fantastic program, it's really versatile, there's so much you can do with it. Um, it's very similar to Lightroom Classic, slightly more user-friendly, um, slightly lighter on the processing, and it's, it's fabulous. Now I'm mainly a landscape photographer, but you can use it for any types of photography at all. So if you're new to my channel, please subscribe and like, and let's get into working in Lightroom. Okay, so we're in Lightroom. Um, so first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to this um, top button here. Now your um, screen will look slightly different um, uh, when you first open up Lightroom. We're gonna to go to add photos. Now, the, the next thing is, is um, going to choose the photographs that you'd like to use. Now what I've done is I've already created a selection folder. I'm finding it more and more, um, much more simple, rather than importing everything to my um, Lightroom Classic catalog. I'm now creating a selection folder and then just importing a small amount of images into Lightroom. So I'm just going to copy all these images here. And then I'm going to do review for import. Now, one way that's really, really important to organize your files, um, Lightroom Classic has many ways of organizing your files. Um, this one has a um, very simple one by just clicking on the folder here. So we can either choose a, um, a folder that we've got here already, or we can create a new folder. So because you'll be doing this for the first time, let's create a new folder together. So I'm just going to call this one Cornwall 23, and I'm going to create. Now, then what I need to do is I need to add that, add all these um, 30 images to my folder. So I'm just going to add those in, and you'll see it importing on the right hand side. So now I'm working within my, um, my Cornwall folder only. Um, so the first thing I was going to show you is, um, if I just go onto this image here, um, I'm going to talk about the, um, the, the functions on both sides. So um, if we ever want to see where everything is stored, so here we've got um, um, various information about your profile, um, then we've got where your um, data has been added and when, um, and then the albums. So you can navigate between albums here really, really easily. So you can pick up on different photographs from different places. I'm gonna mainly stay within this album, but um, that's how you get from album to album really, really easily. So I'm just gonna get rid of that from the net and I'm gonna go through um, these tools on the right hand side here. So first of all, um, my approach to editing, I'm not gonna show you every single function for every single tool. I'm gonna to show you what I find useful and I hope you'll find that approach useful too. So um, first thing is, is presets. Now, um, presets, I don't use that much. However, they can be really, really useful for, um, for, for using AI um, to, to edit your images for quick editing. And you can develop your own presets and edit your own presets so that, um, you're, um, so that you're able to just quickly click and choose a series of, um, uh, of um, images. You can batch process a series of images using presets. So when I hover over them, you can see what they do. Okay, and these are the kind of recommended presets that Lightroom recommends once it's analyzed my photograph. Now, personally, as I say, I don't like using them, um, but they're there for you if you'd like to. Now, if you notice, if you click on the next bar here, it keeps your presets here because you can work on uh, both at once. You can work on presets and you can work on your editing tools, okay? but. Um, the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to concentrate mainly on the editing tools. So 
we've got some really, really important um, editing tools here. So in this first section, um, it's all to do with light. So we've got exposure, that's the light and dark values. We've got contrast, um, the, again, um, the contrast between dark and light. Um, we can bring up the highlights and take down the highlights, which is a really useful function. Shadows is one that I use all the time because you can really take out the shadows from images so you don't get that heavy contrast. Really, really useful. Or conversely, you can put them in. Um, whites, so you've got to be careful with whites. It can often kind of go to gray quite easily. Um, and then looking at blacks as well. So how much intensity you want in those areas. Um, so this is editing, as you can see, in the entire image. So um, uh, everything's being edited at once. So, and then we've got temperature here. So um, on this um, part, on this section, and um, this is the color section. So um, within um, temperature, try not to nudge it too far because you'll find that suddenly it'll become very kind of unrealistic, oversaturated images that aren't really true to how you start to edit. Now, I'm a big believer in editing colors in a way that I saw them and experienced them at the time. So I don't want to kind of mess with that too much. Tint, again, gives you that ability to change the color range slightly. And um, vibrance, um, as we um, put more vibrance and more saturation or less saturation, okay, we can um, we can change the um, the color values massively. Now be very very careful with saturation. You can see here there's this horrible yellow that's coming in here now because it's saturating the whole area. Um, and then you've got the color mixer. So the color mixer, um, you can um, mix one color at a time um, and you can look at the hue. So the hue is the type of color, saturation is the amount of color, and luminance is basically the amount that color um, glows, the amount that color comes through. So you can do this individually with each color in turn. Okay. Um, so coming down to, um, to color grading. So you can color grade um, with all three areas at once. Um, I generally don't do much color grading, but the best way I find to do it is to not do it with all areas at once and just to work on one of the three areas. So the three areas are shadows, midtones, and highlights. So shadows, it allows you to um, look at the luminance within the shadows. Um, also, we can start to select different colorways depending on, on what you want. Now, sometimes this is really useful to just pick out a particular color in a particular place. And you can go through, um, so I find shadows are the most useful, but you can go through new submit tones as well. Okay, but again, be careful because the colors can start to look slightly unrealistic quite quickly. And then lastly, you've got highlights. So again, um, it's, just a, it's just affecting those areas. It's not affecting every area of the photograph and then luminance within that as well. So that is essentially color grading. Now, the way that I would use that, I'll go over um, I'll go over in a minute when I start to edit this photograph. Um, so going down to effects. Now, in terms of effects, there are, there are two here that I use a great deal, and that is clarity and dehaze. So clarity um, creates more of a contrast between darks and lights. Now, it can create quite a harsh image if you take it all the way up to 100%. If you just nudge it up a little bit, you can really, really just create a little bit more definition, a little bit more texture. Um, Dehaze is mainly for, as it says, taking out haze out of a photograph. However, it also creates more contrast in the image. Now, you've got to be careful because it can quite often make the foreground very dark. 
Um, if we use it too much, it's horrible. But if we use it a small amount, it can make a nice difference to the image. Vignette. So vignette is um, where you are um, generally making the edges darker or you're making the edges lighter. Now sometimes a vignette um, images and the purpose of a vignetting an image is essentially to draw your focus to the center of the image more. Um, it's also um, a, a kind of um, leftover from, um, from uh, particular lenses that vignetted quite heavily and people began to kind of like that uh, almost kind of filmic style of a, of a vignetted shot. With landscape photography though, vignettes can quite often just be a bit of a pain because you want an even exposure throughout. Um, now, sharpening and noise reduction. So noise is created by the um, film sensitivity you use. And the film sensitiv sensitivity is um, the ISO that you choose. Now, if there is um, too much noise, you can um, automatically reduce noise and noise reduction on Lightroom. You can also do it manually as well. Just a word of warning about this, just be careful because it can paste over some of the details and it can affect some of the details when you start zooming into the image. So when you're doing any denoising, I would look quite carefully at the image to make sure that it isn't affecting the overall sharpness of the image. Generally, I keep, I keep the image to um, uh, the, the ISO that I took it and I try and control that in camera. But sometimes it is useful to denoise and the noise reduction um, setup is really good on, on Lightroom. Okay, we've got optics. So we've got remove chromatic aberration. So sometimes on the edging, you will find not so much with this and not so much with the lens that I've been using, um, but sometimes you can find um, purple fringing or green fringing. Um, you can also use this defringe to um, take out the purple or the green. Um, now that depends on the way that you shot the, um, the, the picture and I might be able to show you some examples of chromatic aberration but there are lots of videos and things like that. Um, enable lens corrections. Now lens corrections basically what happens with, with Lightroom is um, some uh, lenses have um, distortion in them and many lenses actually have distortion in them at either end of their zoom range. So for instance, if you're using a, um, a 24 to 70 or a 24 to 120, you might find that at one end, it creates either barrel distortion or pin cushion distortion. Now again, these are types of distortion that you can get in lenses. Again, there are lots of videos on barrel and pin cushion distortion, but basically it distorts the um, the, the frame. Um, so in order to stop that, you can tick enable lens correction and I often do that. Sometimes though, it's worth looking at the picture because sometimes it does take away some of the tones and some of the color, color contrast as well. So it's worth just clicking it with and without. So um, Lightroom has automatic lens correction profiles so it can, it can determine what lens you are using and what camera you are using automatically and just apply that straight away. So, okay, so that is everything with an edit. Okay, so crop and rotate, this is more straightforward. So um, we, can, we can bring the picture in and if we want to, we can rotate it by hovering over the corner like this and then deciding where you want to crop it. So. If I, um, if I decide that I want to crop in here, okay, or I want to bring in, um, I might take that, I might take that away from the sand a little bit and crop in there, okay, and then just hit enter on the keyboard when you're done, and it crops the image. So cropping is pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, okay, so this is healing.
So the healing tools are really, really useful. Um, so there are, there, are, there are three healing tools, and it gives you a little video for each to show you what each one does. So content aware is the best for removing whole things like people, uh, large objects, and things like that. Um, spot healing um, is great for removing small details, and this is the one I've used the most. Um, and then we've got um, clone shift, where you want to actually um, introduce an, an additional element into your um, image. Now, the one that I really want to focus on was um, healing. Now, healing is really, really useful. There's a couple of things you can do. So this is a really, really good tip. Um, in the um, in, in this section, you've got this tiny little thing that says visualize spots. This is super handy. Now, the reason you do this is to check for any dust on the sensor. So if you've got a landscape photograph and you've got dust on the sensor, it can cause a lot of issues um, in terms of printing. You get these nasty um, spots on the sensor. It also checks for things like um, discrepancies, like for instance, birds flying past when you don't want them and any other kind of objects in the sky. If you've got a plain blue sky, if you've got a white background, things like that, you can easily see where there are blemishes um, on, your, um, on your image. Okay, right. Now, this section is really, really useful, and you can use it for all different types of um, things. So first of all, um, we've got object selection. So we've got subject, sky, and background. So we haven't got a we haven't got a person in this one, but um, if it were to detect a person, you literally um, just click on the area and it detects the person really, really well. Um, so detecting a sky. So if I just click on sky detect, the mask, the layer mask will come up here in this box, and this is a list of all the different um, filter options um, that that um, that you're applying. And then the um, the mask goes red, so it shows you where it's taken, so where it's decided to um, to place this mask. Now, from this, you can then so you can hover over it. Okay, um, from this, you can then just select this area. And you can do things like affecting the temperature, um, affecting the clarity just in the sky. Now you can see if I put that all the way up, you can see that it's not reflecting, it's not affecting the reflection, it's just affecting the sky area. So it's a really, really useful tool. Um, you could change the tint of the sky. Um, you could, um, you can, you can alter all kinds of different things within this. So, um, um, and also, again, you can do dehazing of the sky as well to add in a little bit more color and take out a little bit of haze. So that's a really, really useful mask. Um, so now I'm just going to click the plus. Um, so next one down, we've got a brush. Now the brush will allow you to identify just a small area, a bit like the spot healing tool. It'll allow you to identify a small area. So for instance, if I wanted to suddenly and make this clouds a little bit lighter for some reason. I could very carefully draw around this cloud, and then I could feather the edges slightly so that it doesn't look quite so blatant that it's just this cloud. Now, this is gonna look awful, but it just gives you an idea of what you can do. So um, I'm gonna take this up, and I'm going to add exposure just to that area. Now you can see there are some bad edges there and I wouldn't recommend doing it. I wouldn't recommend doing it that obviously. But if you if you're just wanting to just add a tiny bit more exposure, you can get away with it quite easily. So be quite careful on the edges with the brush tool. It's worth going a little bit smaller. Okay, the next one. Linear gradient tool. Now this is pretty much exclusively for skies. So what happens is when you click on the linear gradient, you get a crosshair like this. 
And if I click and drag down to the horizon line, what I'm going to get here is I'm going to get a mask that's slowly going from intensely red to almost see-through. Now, what this is doing is it's kind of emulating the way that skies look and feel. They're quite often deeper and darker at the top and slightly brighter towards the bottom. So if we change the exposure, you can see that's what it's doing. That looks hideous like that, I know. But it allows you to put what's called a gradient filter on the entire image. Now, you can also do this by putting physical um, ND grad filters on your camera, but that's another thing altogether. I have got a, uh, a link to um, a video on um, ND filters that I can put up on the screen right now. Um, so that just gives a certain amount of depth and distance to the landscape. But again, be careful with those kind of, with those type of masks. Now, on to pretty much um, two of the most useful of the lot. Okay, so, um, so, so first of all, we're gonna go for color range and luminance range. Now, these are the ones I use all the time. So this will allow you to, again, you get a little, um, you get a little cross this time. And if I click on an area, what it'll do is it'll allow me to create a mask just for this particular color range. Now I can adjust the amount of masking as well so that I have more masking or I have slightly less, depending on what I want. Now this generally does a really, really good job. Now, for instance, if we're just taking a small section of this, we could do something like um, increase the um, color temperature and make it slightly warmer in this section here. And as you can see, it's starting to make it slightly warmer and you can see a little bit more contrast there. So that's a really, really fantastic tool. The other tool, which is one that I use literally all the time is this one, luminance range. Now luminance range is absolutely fantastic. It allows you to pick particular areas within the image and it allows you to just choose those areas and, um, and luminance is the amount of dark and the amount of light in the image. Now again, we can refine this mask and we can we can work on it. So refining the mask, we can um, we can think about the amount here. We can also select the luminance area. So if we drag this over, you can see that the red mask is starting to fade out. And if we drag it this way, the red mask is starting to fade out of these areas and go more towards um, uh, the base of the image rather than the top of the image. Now I find that a lot of the time it does a brilliant job of selecting just the areas I want. So for instance, if I wanted to create less shadow, so the, the red mask is going to go away now, I could start to create less contrast in my image, or I could try and create a little bit more. So these are the main tools for Lightroom. So those are the main tools that I use. Um, now, I think the best thing to do is to go through a proper edit of an image to take you through how to do this. So to start off with, um, what I tend to do is I tend to actually um, um, start off by looking at the image as a whole. So if I choose another image altogether, so it might choose um, this version here, slightly better exposure. So what I'm going to do to start off with before I do anything is I'm going to look at this image as a whole and try and work out what I want out of it. So the first thing I'm going to look for is composition. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is start to think about cropping this image down slightly and think, do I want to see in it? Is that going to be helpful? Or do I want to actually crop that section out to create more of a contrast in the image and more of a sense of drama? Um, 
you can also see here that compositionally we've got one third land and two thirds sky and that can draw you in using the rule of thirds a little bit more. Also got an intersection point with a building on it and that will lead you in more to the scene. So then I'm just going to think about where to crop it. Whether to crop it here, maybe just give this little cloud here just a little bit more space. So I'm happy with that. So that's the first thing I do. Um, the second thing I do is I start to think about, um, rather than looking at the image as a whole, I actually go straight to layer masks after cropping. And the reason for that is that I'm trying to get as much um, contrast in the bright areas as possible. I'm trying to get a kind of even exposure. So I'm going to go straight for range. I'm going to go straight for luminance range. And I'm going to click on this land area here. Now, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and take down the, as you can see, there's some red in the sky in the left there. So I'm going to take that down so it's just the buildings and the land. Now, that's a perfect selection. Next thing I'm going to do is I want to add some clarity to this to pick out the textures on the cliff face because there isn't quite enough um, texture in the cliff face. So. Here we go. So I'm actually going to add quite a lot of clarity to that. And the next thing is, it's quite dark. So I'm going to try and pick out some of the shadow areas as much as I can without it going too far. Okay, and um, you often find that exposure on dark areas um, if you go too far, it just looks ridiculous. So you've got to be really, really wary of exposure on dark areas. Try and use clarity um, and um, increase the shadows before you do that. Now, I still want some contrast in the scene, but I wanted to pick out some of the texture that was in the buildings and in the cliff there before I did anything else. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try using color range. I'm going to try and pick out this color a little bit more. So I'm just going to try and refine that a little bit and see if I can get more of the clouds than I've got already. Okay, so that's about as much as I can get out of this filter. So the aim of this is basically just to change the color temperature. So um, I'm just going to go to, um, in this case, uh, temperature here. I'm just going to take that slider, try and slide that to the right slightly to warm up those clouds. Because these clouds were super orange on the day. And I'm going to try and also add more of a warm tint to those clouds. And then I might bring up the saturation a little bit as well, because it was really intense that day. It was more intense than the camera recorded it. So I'm going to try and bring up that saturation as much as I can without it looking too artificial. OK, so um, next thing is I'm going to just do a um, small linear gradient over the top here just to create some depth in the sky. Now you've got to be a little bit careful because when there's something in front of the linear gradient, like these clouds here, it can affect the clouds as well as the sky behind. So you need to be a little bit careful when you're doing this. So again, I'm just going to go down to exposure and I'm just going to bring in a little bit of darkness into that. Okay, so once I've got it to that level, what I then want to do I'm just going to collapse that so you can see the image better. Um, I'm going to edit the image as a whole. So now I'm just going to look at these areas and try and get a little bit more contrast into it again without making it look too unrealistic. So I might try and bring out the shadows in, in everywhere, just a touch. Um, the highlights, I think, are looking good. Might just bring those down a little bit. Um, the whites um, are generally looking fine. 
and blacks. I might just put in a tiny bit more black to get some more contrast on the cliff here. Okay, and then coming down to here. So in this area, um, I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it a go. Um, mixing the um, the midtones and try and do a little bit of color grading here to change the midtones in the image. So I'm just going to go towards a more kind of pinky hue, just slightly. Now I know that looks unrealistic, but that is exactly how it was on the day. These clouds were absolutely pink and wonderful. So. Um, so I'm happy with that. I think that's, that's, that's looking good. Um, so the next thing is, I'm just going to go down to um, um, remove any chromatic aberration. Sometimes when you've got hard edges like this, there might be some. And then I'm going to click Enable Lens Correction and just see if there's any difference there between doing it or not. If you can't see a visual difference, then um, I wouldn't do it. Okay. Um, Oh, sorry, I would do it rather. <laughs> um, and that is that. Right. So once I've gone through these tools, oh no, there's one more actually. I'm just going to quickly do a quick visual check for any um, spots. And what I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for areas around here. So I'm just going to have a quick look and just going to go into this area here. Okay, and here is a bird. I'm not sure if that bird's really um, working there. So I'm going to go into um, Spot Heal. I'm going to go over it and get a small tool like that. And there we go. It's gone. Deleted. So, and then I'll come out of that and just have a look at the overall image. So I'm happy with the way that this image is. is um, has come out. There are some birds here, but I don't mind them so much. There's a little bit of grain in the image because uh, I took it handheld. I don't mind that either. It has a natural feel to the image. So overall, we've got more texture in the foreground here. We've got more color contrast in the background. I'm not going to affect the sky too much. Um, I might just add a tiny bit of dehaze to it actually. Um, you do have to be careful with dehaze. Okay, and that is pretty much that. So the next thing is, is we imported all our images. Now we want to export them. So you, this is a library catalog Lightroom. So you have to import your images and then you export your images. So a couple of really important things about exporting. So First thing to do then is go File and Export. Then you can see on the right hand side here a series of options. You need to make sure that you've got the right image setting. Now some people don't like to um, compress their images. So I would use a TIFF or a DNG. Otherwise you can use JPEG. Now this is really, really important. You don't want it to be on small or custom. I would always have it to full size quality. There's absolutely no point degrading your image um, by, by uh, exporting it 20% quality. I would always export it at 100% quality. Watermark, I'm, I never include those, but you can if you like. Okay, so now we just go export one photograph. Now it'll ask you where you want to save that exported photograph. So I'm going to go to my file, and I'm going to go to my edited images and I'm going to place it in here and I'm going to select the folder. Now what it'll do is it'll just export that image using this blue bar here and then your image is done. So I hope that really helped. I, I, know I realize this is quite a long video but there's quite a lot to it and I really hope you enjoy using Lightroom. It's a fantastic program. It's more user-friendly than Lightroom Classic, and it's got loads of functions that enable you to do massive amount. Um, the recent masking and the recent denoise really, really changed the way Lightroom works, and there are functions being updated all the time to make this an even better program. Mm -hmm.